This young girl, just 18 years of age, no qualifier, male or female, has ever got into a Grand Slam and won it. Raducanu did just that without even dropping a single set on the way. And back in June at Wimbledon, she was ranked 338 in the world. Now she's number 10 in Britain. And today she rises to the world number 20, number one in Britain. She she rises to number 23 in the world. It's quite incredible and now is the new British number one. And it's all about pressure now, but I mean, she's quite forthcoming when she talks about coping with pressure. The biggest triumph for me is how I managed to just not think of absolutely anything else except for my game plan and what I'm going to execute. You know, I, I didn't really um, think anything of anything other than what was going on on the tennis court. So all the outside stuff, I, I just completely zoned in and focused on my craft. And when I was on the tennis court, it was just business as usual, you know, focusing on the plays. And that's that's the biggest thing that I'm proud of. And I think that's definitely what has the biggest thing that's probably helped me to win this title. Business as usual. If that's business as usual, this girl is in for some career. I mean, Sammy, yeah. where does it rank for you? I, I would think it has to be, for me, it has to be the greatest sporting achievement. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly up there with with ones that we can mention in the past. But given the age and the the, the size and scale of the tournament, you also have to give a lot of credit to the other girl, Fernandez. that she was blown off the court by this girl. But if you look at this girl, I mean, with no taking away from what Radicano achieved, she didn't play a top 10 player to get to the final. The other girl played the number two seed, the number three seed, the number five seed, and the number 16 seed to get to the final. And also, if you look at Raducanu's performance and her outlook, it's based upon limited expectation, being able to have that closed mind about being free and carefree. And my biggest takeaway from besides the achievement is I really, really hope that this girl has got proper management around her because, you know, she has a huge opportunity, but now she's now on the global stage. Um, she, everyone will want a piece of her. And mm. I hope that the representation that she has... The first thing I read on Sunday morning, disappointingly for me, were two things that I found quite disappointing. I don't want to be negative. was how women's tennis should now get equal pay with men's, and she should be the poster girl for that, and how she should get a CBE. And neither of those should be things that she needs to be thinking about or should be reverberating around. All we should be doing is saying, wow, mm. what a phenomenal achievement for yeah. an 18-year-old British tennis player. Not what a poster girl she should be, not how she should be the poster girl for equal pay, not how she should get a gong how she should be celebrated for that phenomenal performance, not just against a player that was a really good player, but against a, I thought, a despicably partisan crowd at times. Because they didn't, when she was playing well, they didn't give her an ounce. No. At Wimbledon, we do the same thing, but when the other player's playing well, they give plaudits, they mm. give applause, silence when she played well. Mm. And I thought that was a little bit low, but she came through it. Phenomenal. That's phenomenal an American audience for you, isn't it, though? I mean, yeah. that, that is typical of how they behave. Absolutely the, right. The Solheim Cup. The Ryder right, right right Cup. Right but right the girl wasn't even America. She yeah. was Canadian, wasn't she? Yeah. That's what makes it yeah. worse. Yeah, that makes but the achievement all the better. Absolutely. Actually, absolutely. It phenomenal. shows her mental strength, especially after the disappointment of Wimbledon. And, and as Simon said, it's, the best young sports people in the world, when they come onto the scene, they have that ability to play free and show their quality on the big stage instead of freezing. And that's what makes the difference. I can only compare it. Michael Owen, 18, he was already in and around the Liverpool team, but he went off to the World Cup, didn't he? And he scored the wonder goal and set the world alight. And I don't even think he was... Well, he couldn't have been prepared for what came next. You know, even popping to McDonald's with him on the way home from training, you know, something like that. Because, we, you know, we lived same area at the time. Hordes of people within minutes. You know, hordes of people. All over them. Yeah, and he found, you know, it was uncomfortable. And then he had to start realising where you go and where you don't go. And then, of course, there was that story about, I think he was living at his mum's at the time, but there was, a, I think there was a lady downstairs in the, or upstairs, sorry, and got into the house going through his washing basket or linen basket, you know, and stuff like, all those things that you, you never think you'd have to deal with. Yeah. That fame. Yeah, because this level of fame she's going to get is going to be monumental. I mean, it'll be she mm. everywhere she goes, and she, it's very important for her to be insulated from it. Yeah, because she's eighteen and she has a tennis career. I don't want to see her with respect on any red carpets. I don't want to no. see her on any daytime TV. But that's what I was just getting to. So Michael was brilliant at that. He wasn't bothered. Yeah, about and you'd never see him on a red carpet. Now and that was twofold. One you said about representation, yeah. which is key. I don't know how much influence tennis agents have compared to football agents. Mm. But an agent who's been there and done it and understands how to protect her from this. But the other thing as well, which you can't pick and choose, unfortunately, in life, is your family. 
Yeah. And your friends to a degree, because you grow up with them, and you you yeah. have to, you have to you have to have a good support network who aren't jumping on the bandwagon of pushing you into these things to benefit well, themselves. Right. It sounds as so though she's got everything. No, I, going listen, for I listened to her father do, do an interview protective. on the weekend. He was very tearful before the, all the way through. Yeah. But you know, you get the sense that they've instilled good values, good disciplines. She comes from a good tennis club in, of course, in the southeast of England, um, and she's got all the grounding there, and she's got the personality. Mm. It ju she just needs to be protected a little bit from what's coming down the pike for her, which will be potentially the wrong people trying to get involved, the wrong endorsement. She's going to get a world of opportunity. She's got the world in front of her. Yeah. It's about what she does next. She's won the US Open, and it's a phenomenal achievement, but she has... A long career, health permitting, she has a long career mm. ahead of her. And she's, I mean, she's very bright. She's very intelligent. Sure. The people around her, I think, will know what to do, Simon. They they will know what to do. They've been with her well, long you, enough. You, you hope, but, no, you know, no one would have ever expected her to have won a Grand Slam in her second Grand Slam. Yeah. You know, you listen to Piers Morgan's analysis of her, you know, that she was a choker and because she had a panic attack at Wimbledon and she didn't have the, you know, mm. the capability and psychological profile to be able to compete at the top level. That was wrong. And now she's going to have a group of people around Around her that will also have a tremendous opportunity. Unfortunately, the greatest divider in the world and the greatest polluter of sports people's agendas is money. Correct. And it will come along. Yeah. And it's just very important that the family unit keeps around her at the same time as the professional expertise yeah. is allowed to drive her career. The greatest ever achievement by a British sports I, person. I think it's difficult to say that it's not right right up there. You Must know, be. Bradley Wiggins' Must achievement be. Bradley Wiggins' achievements were pretty phenomenal in two thousand and twelve. We're talking about if we're talking about age, then eighteen years of age to go and win a Grand Slam. Yeah. It has to be. But then you look at Must Wiggins Danny. as well. I can't think of many yeah. many better. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, ten till one. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.